Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Alright, so Vasily Lomachenko makes his return to the ring, defeats Nakatani in nine rounds, pretty much as good as I've seen Lomachenko in a while. I had some questions going into this fight, mainly of which the fact that Nakatani, in my opinion, I will put him in top 10 at 135 pounds because he's been in there with Tifimo Lopez, albeit he lost the fight, but he gave a very good account of himself. And as I stated, a lot of people felt he won that fight. I didn't myself personally. But he definitely took rounds off Teofimo Lopez. And that fight there made a lot of people question how he do. Not just against Lomachenko, but against Richard Comey. Because lest we forget, he went on to fight Richard Comey the next fight. A lot of people made Richard Comey favourite based upon the Nakatani performance. Obviously, he won his previous fight against Felix Rodejo. Rodejo did have him down in that fight early on. And, you know, he, he rallied back to win it. But I guess looking in retrospect, Rodejo is not... He, well, he's not fighting anymore for obvious reasons, but at the time you would have said probably, yeah, top 10 in around that kind of level. For him to be getting dropped by Rodejo, because Rodejo's not a devastating puncher by any stretch, it kind of makes you wonder, was he maybe, did he maybe see better days? Or potentially, was it a style issue? Because you could see that the attributes of Nakatani gave to Yafima Lopez, probably was it just a style issue. Nevertheless, against Lombachenko, none of them reared their head. Nakatani did try at times to keep it at range. You could see that he was using the jab, but what he was doing when he was at range, you see, Nakatani is slow. He's got slow feet. He's not got the best upper body movement, so Lomachenko was landing that straight left hand at will. You could see in the fifth round, he landed one up again, the ropes, and it was kind of, it was a legit knockdown. It was kind of awkward the way Nakatani, they kind of fell into one another, and then Nakatani went down. But he went down nonetheless. And honestly, I genuinely didn't think Nakatani would get dropped by headshots. I think I said in my prediction video that if Nakatani is going to get dropped, it's going to be through the body. It's going to be a sustained body attack because whilst he is tall, he is upright. He leaves that body open. Lomachenko against taller guys, certainly at lightweight, he's been prolific with hitting the body. You know, he's been going downstairs. Luke Campbell is a good example. You know, taller guy, rangier guy, Lomachenko ripping body punches in. With this, it was the headshots. And, you know, from the opening bell, Lomachenko just seemed to be on his game. You know, I re Lomachenko can start slow sometimes. And I really did think in this fight, you know, obviously I didn't watch it live, but I really did think that Lomachenko would kind of, how would I describe it? He would do, he'd be like Tiafimo Lopez light, the way he was in that fight. So he'd maybe, you know, kind of test the war or see how it is take him a round or two or a couple of rounds to get maybe acclimatized to the range whatever power is there from Nakatani there was none of that really there was none of that from the opening bell he was just kind of you know doing his normal in and out movement using his footwork to great effect he pressures very well with his feet I mean Lomachenko is some of the best footwork you'll see you'll see just period and apparent you know very very good footwork from Lomachenko he was able to gain was able to land the shots as I said Nakatani his, his hooks are alright, his straight right hands are alright, he's not got much of an uppercut, you know, which is a good punch to use against Lomachenko, his feet are very slow, I mean, for a lightweight, you see him in the ring, his feet are just, they're very, it, it's obvious there, and especially because at lightweight, when someone is slow footed, you tend to kind of notice it a bit more, because most of them guys, you know, are a lot more fluid, they move around the ring, the, you know, at the, at the higher weights, yeah, you know, slow footedness, it, it, that is what that is, but Nakatani has very slow feet, Lomachenko was able to just put on a clinic. I don't think he lost a round and stopped him in the ninth. The stoppage, yeah, he was, Nakatani was taking a beating in that ninth round. And the referee, yeah, you could, maybe a few punches later he could have jumped in because Nakatani was the sort of guy where he was just not going to stop. That's the thing about a lot of these Japanese fighters. You know, I remember the guy who fought, uh, well, they fought Mungi, what was his name, Inoue. I think he's related to Naomi in a way. I think he's a cousin or something. And he just kept coming for it. He, that guy just, he, he was crew with that guy, but he just had no regard for anything. He was very crew with that guy. And that's the thing you have here with Nakatani. Very tough. Definitely appears to be durable. Um, but just in this case, Lombachenko just overwhelmed him and he was getting hit way too clearly. The referee stopped the fight at the right time and Nakatani was taking a beat. And then, yeah, in that night round, maybe they could have stopped it a little bit earlier, but hey, uh, Lomachenko marches on. If you want to use this as ammunition for a possible Tiafima Lopez rematch, honestly, like, 
I would like to see it because it was a decent fight the first time. But I reckon Tiafima Lopez is going to fight Cambosis Jr. And if he can't get a fight with Haney or someone like that, he's going to move up. Because I reckon weight is a big issue for Tiafima Lopez. It's been an issue for a couple of years. Like, this is not just not an issue that's just reared its head lately. You know, he's a big 135 pounder and he's been known to be, you know, having issues at the weight for the last couple of years now. I think three years maybe. So Tiafima Lopez is known. I reckon that money will play a factor in it, of course. But I reckon that Tiafima might move up. Not because he doesn't want to fight Lomachenko, of course not. But I reckon just because he's just outgrown the weight. And you see it with people. When you see fighters move up, when they're in a good division and they're not like going life and death, you know it's an issue. Like look at Naomi Inouye when he was at super flyweight. When he moved up from super fly to bantam, at that stage, well super fly's always been a good division, but at that stage he was going through people, he wasn't looking like losing, he was looking devastating. There was good fights he made like against Rune Vasai, Estrada, but he moved up to 118 just because he couldn't do it anymore. You know, it, it, different when you have these fighters like, you know, like Lewis Ritson or someone who loses, oh, I can't make the way. That, oh, I can't make the way. That's why I lost. It's different with that. A lot of people use it as an excuse. But when you fighters who are in a weight where they're not like, they're looking good, they're looking sharp, they're looking devastating, and they just can't make it anymore because it's just not, it's just taken away from them. Or they can still perform good, but the weight is just becoming more and more of an issue. That's when you know they really are having an issue. You know, when they've no reason to move up other than that it's not because they lost not because any of that that's when you start seeing that in terms of as i said loma versus tiafimo there's no comparison lomachenko did the much better job not even just to stop him is nakatani didn't win around he won plenty of rounds against tiafimo lopez like i said it was a competitive fight i suppose in hindsight look look at the box track scorecards you'd say well you know yeah lomachenko stopped him but tiafimo lopez barely lost the round yeah officially he barely lost the round but believe you me that was a close fight anyone who's seen it will will testify to that so Lomachenko, we need to see how he gets on. I wonder about his shoulder because every time he fights now, he seems to injure that shoulder or have niggles with the shoulder. I, I wonder how that held up and what he does from here. I suspect he's targeting Tiafimo Lopez. He'll, he'll want that rematch. And to be honest with you, I don't mind that fight. It was a decent fight. You know, Lomachenko felt he won the fight. I personally didn't feel that. I thought Tiafimo Lopez just nicked it, but hey, it was a competitive fight never, nevertheless. He knows where he can improve in terms of he started very late. Or, yeah, he did start very late. But saying that, I think that if he starts earlier, he leaves himself more open to being caught by Tiafimo. So it's a catch-22 for Lomachenko. Anyway, those are my thoughts on this. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your thoughts below. Smash the like button if you did. Subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. Hashtag Gmans rocks. All that good stuff. For now, lads and lassies, I'll talk to you. Peace.